hello everyone you're welcome to my channel so today we'll be making an off shoulder neckline dart bustier okay off shoulder neckline dart bustier so i've given several tutorials on how to make the princess dart bustier that is armhole dart bustier but today it is a neckline dart bustier we're making and it is off shoulder for a big bust yes the bust sizes that is a bust circumference is 47 inches and the under bust is 42 inches so it's actually a big bust okay so um i'll create your indulgence to please bear with me with the noise in the background my studio is on the roadside so there are a lot of noise going on so please bear with that and um, just focus on the lesson and ignore the noise okay thank you and if you're yet to subscribe please subscribe so i would be marking on the paper because i'm working with white fabric i wouldn't want to mark so much chalk on it okay and if i use chalk you might not see it clearly unless i mark it so hard so but Everything I'll be doing on the paper can be done directly on the fabric. All you need to do is place your fabric on fold, okay? And to know the measurement you're to fold is the biggest circumference. The biggest circumference divided by 4 plus 5 inches. So the 5 inches is for the dart and allowance, okay? So, but since I'm cutting on paper, I'll go straight ahead to cut, to draft on the paper without folding it. So now... The biggest circumference here is actually the boss because the boss is 47 and the hip is 44. So depending on the length of your fabric, or I mean the length of the dress or blouse you're making, if it's going to get to the hip, if the hip is the biggest circumference, you divide it by 4 and add 5. If the boss is the biggest circumference, you divide it by 4 and add 5. So let's get straight to the lesson of the day. Now, since it is off shoulder, I am going to take away the shoulder measurement that is from the shoulder to the neckline will be going off okay so for average of shoulder what do you uh, what you usually take off is four inches just average the one that will just you know be at the shoulder not falling down so it's uh, four inches but for this client i'm using five so you can take whatever depth you need whatever neckline depth depending on how deep you want it to be the average is four so you can go be, uh, below that four to five I mean, um, five to six inches. So I'm using five. So to do this now, you need to place your tape at the edge of your fabric at that five inches or whatever you're taking off. You place your tape there and you mark the vertical measurements. So the vertical measurements we are working with are the upper boss points, upper boss points, the boss point, the under boss point, the waist point, and the hip point. So these are the measurements we are working with okay so now you place your tape at the neckline the measurement you're taking for the neckline you place your tape right there and you mark the vertical measurement so the upper boss point is at nine inches and here it is i'll mark it so you want to know how to get this in case you don't i mean you're not able to measure it on your client the upper boss point is the same as the armhole depth or the chest line so there's a formula for deriving it and the formula is your bust circumference divide by six plus 1.5 whatever answer it gives you that is your upper bust point which is the same thing as the armhole depth if you're making a dress with armhole okay so that is with um shoulder from your shoulder point to that point is your armhole depth and from that point, that is from your shoulder to that point, is the same thing as your upper boss point. So wherever your armhole depth, um, wherever you have your armhole depth, that is where the upper boss point is, okay? I hope this is clear. Boss point is at 12 inches, so I'll mark that. And the under boss is at 16 inches. Then the waist, so this very blouse is getting to the hip. The waist is 20 inches and the hip point is 28. So now I'll be adding extra two inches. You'll be asking, uh, you'll be wondering why. I have always advised that whenever you're making a boost here, always add enough allowance at the lower part because sometimes you join, it's not, it won't align. So you need to trim off, um, trim off the excess. So if you have 
if you have taken enough allowance, whatever the length of your blouse is, it will fall within that allowance you have taken. So when you join, what you do, you then measure the actual length of your blouse and trim off the excess. So it is better to have excess than to have shortage. If you have shortage, you'll be looking for how to make it up. But if you have excess, all you need to do is to trim it off. Okay? So it's better to be on the safe side. So what am I saying? The, the, the hip point, which is actually the length of the blouse, is at 28. But you know you'll be needing hemming allowance. So for my hem allowance, I actually use half inch. But like I said, to be on the safe side, I'm going to add extra 1.5 inch, making it 2 inches. So I'm marking at 30 inches instead of 28. Okay? So, but there are things you need to do to help your bustier top or blouse align. Like replacing your dads and making sure you add all the necessary allowance. But also do this. Add allowance at the lower part as well. So having marked all these points, I would repeat the point somewhere on the paper to enable me draw straight lines, okay? So like I said, ignore the noise in the background, please. I'm on, my studio is along the road. So I'm repeating the points, then I'll draw my straight line and label it, okay? So I have drawn my line and labeled them. This is the upper bust point the bust point, the under bust, the waist, and the hip, okay? So when you have done this now, the next thing is to take the bust pan. So the bust pan is actually the nipple to nipple. So someone who once asked what nipple to nipple, that is the distance between the apex of your bust, the, 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 the way you have the, the nipple, the distance between one and the other is your bust pan. Okay, you divide it by two. So nipple to nipple, divide by two. In this case, the nipple to nipple is 10 inches. Divide by two, that is five inches. So now I would add half inch because we're going to cut through the dots. So the half inch will be used for joining. By the time you join the dots, you will arrive back at five inches. So I'm marking 5.5. So you're going to mark it actually from the beginning of the blouse to the hemline okay 5.5 so let me make sure i place it well So after marking it, you just connect the points. So this is the boss point. Sorry, I have double lines there, but this is actually the boss point. So just connect the lines. Okay, so you connect the lines and you have it. Having done this now, we're going to mark our dots. So you come to the under bust. So this is for a big bust. So what you place here is two inches and one inch here. For smaller bust. You can take one inch here and one inch on this side. So I've explained that clearly on this channel. I have a video on that taking, okay? When you have a big boss, how you take the dart. So when you have a big boss like this, 47, and the under boss, 42, the difference is, a, is above four. You would place your dart the way I'm placing it, two inches on this side and one inch on this side. So it works, okay? Now you will connect. Just connect it down. Okay, so this is it. Don't forget, I said if the boss is small, for example, you minus the under boss from the boss circumference and you're getting like two inches for the difference. That is boss circumference minus under boss. If your answer is from two inches to three inches like that, you take one inch here and one inch here. But if your difference is above four, take two inches here and one inch here. So when you have done this, now we'll come to the boss point. 
I have explained on this channel how to do, how to go about this side to avoid pointy bust. Most especially when you're making a princess dart booster. That is the armhole dart booster. But this is neckline. So you don't usually have it if you create it well. What I will do is to step down by one inch. So for princess dart booster, for bigger boss, you, you, what you do is come down by either one inch or two inches, depending on how big the boss is. Is. I hope this is clear. We want to create the cup and we don't want it to be sharp at this bust point. We want it to just have a nice curved bust um, area. Okay, so I'm coming down by one inch. So this one inch works for everybody when it comes to the neckline that. But for princess that, if you're working with a very big bust, you should come down by either one inch or two inches depending on how big the bus is so that when you curve it you have enough room okay you, the cup will be big enough to accommodate the bus so that is it so by the time you have stepped down here in this case you are stepping down by one inch to avoid sharpness at the bus point so by the time you have stepped down by one inch now you make your curve connecting this point to this point you use a curve to do that you connect it using a curve so you place your french curve like so and you do this so when i say using a curve i don't mean you have to use french curve what i mean is that you have to make it curvy not straight so even if you're using free hand you can just curve it using your free hand okay so you can just use your chalk and you make sure it is curvy so by on this side on this side it doesn't have to be curvy just connect slightly like so okay so now you are done with this now you come to the neckline at this neckline you for a um, smaller boss you can take one inch on this side and half inch on this side okay but in this case i'm working with big boss i'll take two inches on this side because but i want it to have a nice curve to accommodate the boss why on this side i'll take one inch okay so this side two inches that is on the neckline and on this side one inch okay so now you would connect it from this point to the boss point this time around to the boss point we are not stepping up so the reason why we step up in the princess that because the the curve will be coming from the arm hole so by the time it's coming from the arm hole if you connect it directly to the boss point it will be sharp okay so that is why when we are making princess that boost here you step up and by the time you connect from the armhole you have a nice curve okay so you can imagine if you connect from here you see it to be sharp but for neckline neckline boost here since it's neckline boost here we will connect directly from the neckline to the bust point okay so you will use a curve so you make it curvy from the neckline to the boss point. So I hope this lesson is clear to you. So you should be able to differentiate when you're making a neckline dart bustier from armhole dart bustier. Okay. So by the time you have connected this one like so, you also connect this one to the boss point as well. Like so. Okay. So you go this way, you go this way. Now we have created our dots. You can see what we have here and what we have here. So having done this now, we place the neckline. You place the neckline. So for the neckline, depending on how wide you want the neckline to be. Okay. To be. But don't forget that this is an off shoulder. Okay. So let's say this is the neckline. That is, I'm um, sorry. Don't mind my drawing. This is the neckline. Remember the arm, the sleeve will go this way. Okay, the sleeve will come this way, and this is the neckline. So depending on how you want this neckline to be, you place it. But remember that it is an off shoulder. So you need to consider the round shoulder. Okay, so the round shoulder measurement of the client minus the sleeve measurement you took off. That is what the, you use as your neckline to have a nice off shoulder. So you place your tape. Let's say this is your client's shoulder. 
Okay, please ignore the, anyhow my drawing is just here. What you do, you place your tape around your shoulder, around the client's shoulder. Okay, so I think I should put a picture on the screen. So that is how you place your tape around the client's shoulder to take the round shoulder measurements. Okay. So that is how to take the round shoulder of your client. So now you know the round shoulder. In this case, my client's round shoulder is 42 inches. So what did I take away for the sleeve? I took five inches, right? So this five inches, remember it to go to the back. So the front five inches, the back five inches. On this other side, five inches, the back five inches. That is 10 inches on this side, 10 inches on this side. That is what, 20 inches. The total for my sleeve width is 20 inches. And the round shoulder of my client is what? 42 inches. So to know the length of the neckline, that is the width of the neckline we are taking. 42, which is the round shoulder of my client, minus the sleeve. So 42 minus the sleeve which is 20 so the answer is what 22 meaning that what i need for my neckline is 22 both for front and the back remember we're dealing with round the shoulder that is all round so you are going to divide this by two for the front and for the back so by the time i divide this by two i'll get 11 meaning that my neck width is 11 the front 11 the back 11 okay so this will give you a perfect off shoulder round, nice looking off shoulder so i hope this is clear but if you're not clear you can leave your question in the comment section below okay so i'm using 11 for my neck width and remember that your fabric is on fold so this 11 has to be divided by two half side and half that is this 11 from here to here now is 11 but because your fabric is on fold you have to divide that 11 by 2 to know what you're placing here so 11 divided by 2 that is 5 or 5 okay so what it means that on my neckline here i'm measuring 5.5 okay so by the time i now join the sleeve everything will now give me the client's round shoulder so the neckline plus the sleeve will give you the client's round shoulder. So when you're measuring for off shoulder, take the round shoulder depending on how the client wants the dress to be on her shoulder. Okay, if the client wants it higher or lower, just measure it that way. So that is what you'll be working with. Okay, so in this case now, I'll measure 5.5 as my neck width. So for the neck depth, we already know, which is 5 inches from the shoulder. So this is the neck width now, 5.5. And here it is. Okay. So this 5.5, this is it here. This is my neck width. It fell into this dart. So from this point now, I would mark, I would uh, replace this dart. I hope this is clear. From this point... I would replace this that. So another way to do it is just to close your that. Just assume you have sewn the that. Okay. By the time you close your that, you cannot place the neckline. You cannot place the neckline. But there's no need. Just try to understand it. This is where the neckline fell. So from this point now, replace this that. Move this measurement here, two inches and one inch. Replace it from this point. So that when you cut off the that and join your neckline would be there you have got it you will get it so two inches here one inch here that is three inches so from this point of my neck this thing i would replace it that here it is okay so here it is so this is my neckline by the time i cut off this that and join this is it but remember that when you join you'll be joining by half inch when i place the when i place the this box pan i added half inch Okay, that is the half inch for joining this side to this side. But on this side now, I have to add that half inch for joining the two sides. I hope this is clear. We are cutting off this dart, right? By the time we cut off this dart, we join by half inch. So that half inch you take away from here to join to this one. Replace it. So that is the half inch I will now mark. 
from here now this is half inch okay so i hope this is clear now from this half inch add another half inch that you will use in joining the bodies to the sleeve because we want to create armhole we want to create armhole we have gotten our neckline remember your neckline will be connected to the upper bust to give you armhole but remember that we'll be joining sleeve to the blouse so that's you need half inch from this blouse to join with the sleeve so replace other half inch here it is i hope this is clear so all together this is everything i need for this neckline area then you create your armhole but to create your armhole you come to this upper bust remember if you're making let's say we're making a dress with shoulder let's say you mark your shoulder here you take your armhole depth you go like this and you create your armhole right so but this one is off shoulder and remember that this side now maybe you'll be your neckline okay but this one is off shoulder so your your armhole come from the neckline to the point where you have your upper bust which is also your armhole depth hmm? remember this is your armhole depth which is also the upper bust Mm -hmm. which is also the upper bust that is this line here and that is where your armhole gets to so if this were to cut if we were to cut this to be to be off shoulder now you can see that it will connect to the neckline okay we are removing the shoulder so i hope i've not confused you please <laughs> let's get back to what we're doing so i hope this is clear to you now so at this upper bust the measurement you place there is your bust circumference okay so your bust circumference divide by four that is what you place here in this case the bust circumference divided by four is 11.75 that is 47 divided by four 11.75 okay you mark it mark it there so by that you have marked it remember you have that that will be cut off from here you will cut off this that measure the that so measure whatever you'll be cutting off from here and replace it okay so you replace it by the time you have replaced i've not added any allowance yet the allowance i'll add here now is also the half inch for joining the sleeve okay so this is the half inch for joining the sleeve because we are creating armhole here. We are creating armhole. So I have not joined the seam allowance. What we will do now? Let's just connect our armhole. So you do that using a curve. So remember when I say using a curve, it doesn't have to be your curve ruler. You can use your free hand and just connect like so. Just make it curvy, okay? So I'm just using my French curve because I'm just used to that. So make sure you connect it. Let it have a little curve. So let me make it have a little curve. So it makes the arm hook and um, makes your dress sit nicely there without having so much fabric at that armhole area. So this curve helps so that your at the armhole area it will relax well. So you can see what we have here. We have created the off shoulder arm. Um, and at this side we have gotten a neckline by the time we cut the dart and stitch we have a balanced neckline so we are done with this part now we will place our horizontal measurements that is the second friends at this point we already have our bust measurements applied here so no need putting it here again just come to the under bust because the measurement you place here has covered up for the bust Come to the underboss second uh, measurement or underboss point, and you place the underboss circumference divide by four. So underboss here is forty-two divide by four. That is ten point five. So I would mark my ten point five, and I will replace this that three inches that two inches here and one inch here. Okay. That is three inches. So let me take that again. I have some other marks. Okay, here it is. Now replace three inches that 
here it is and okay i don't want to confuse you with so much point 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 by the time you have replaced three inches that you also need to add half inch for joining this side to this side this side is settled when we place our boss pan we added the half inch but here we need to add half inch okay so for joining this side this is good i have not added seam allowance yet this is just the actual measurements okay so when you have done this so let me use chalk to indicate that this is the mark so that I don't um, uh, miss it up with other marks I have there. At the waist, now, you take the waist circumference divided by 4. So in this case, it is 11 inches. I'll mark it. Replace my 3 inches that plus the half inch for joining it. So let me take it at once, 3.5. Then this same measurement is the same thing we have for the hip because the hip and the waist measurements are the same. But at the hip, I'll add ease because it is an elderly woman. She wants the blouse to be free at the hip and the wrapper will be tied on it. Okay. So whatever measurement I have here is what I'll place here. Then I'll add one inch ease. I'll add one inch ease. So this is it plus one inch. Or yeah, one inch is okay. One inch is okay. So that is it. Now I will connect. Let me make it obvious. So from this point now, connect. Just go straight. Okay. To the waist. You can cut across the underbust to the waist, then to the hip. Okay, so this is what we have. So the shape we have here is because of the dart. When we cut the dart and stitch, everything will stay well. And sometimes depend on the body of your client. Okay, if your client has big tummy or anyhow, they to show on the drafting. So we have done this. It's mainly to add our seam allowance. So when you're adding your seam allowance, after all you have done, remember you're going to turn this with your lining. So if you actually want like one inch seam allowance in the dress, use one and a half. So by the time you turn with lining, you will now be left with the one inch, okay? So I'm adding 1.5 as my seam allowance. So just adding 1.5. I'll connect so now we are done we are done the next thing is to cut off or cut out the dart okay we are cutting out all these parts like so all these parts are going out okay all these parts are going out so let me cut it out and we'll see what we have there So can you see what we have here? Okay, so this is all we have. By the time you join this point by half inch, you see your neckline and your arm hole. Okay, and every other thing will just stay well. You have a nice pose. So we'll cut the back. After cutting the back, I'll transfer to the fabric and then go ahead to stitch okay so to cut the back it is uh, actually very very simple there's a way you can go about it you just place this together like so eliminating the bust cup because there's no bust at the back you eliminate the bust cup and you trace out whatever you have here okay so how to eliminate the bust cup you're just making sure that this point and this point come together like this once they are together this is the back. Then with your zipper allowance, okay, at the neckline too, you can make some adjustments because of this space here. You just bring it together like this. Okay, 
this is just the back you can see this is just the back so for the dart of the back the back dart you can just use waistline dart okay and that is what i'll be using waistline dart i will not cut it out so let's just get straight to that so i have placed the front so that i can cut the back okay this is a very easy way to go about it but when you have done it this way you are you're going to add one inch to this side so if that is because i'm using waist that and for the waist that i'm going to take one inch so you can see we took away the that for the front so this is just the the normal bodies okay without that so i'm going to place allowance for the, the waist that i'll be using for the back which is one inch so this one inch now I'll just mark one inch at this other side of the paper and I'll connect it. So when I connect it, I'll just trace every other thing. So placing it this way is just for me to get my neckline and the arm hole. Okay. So just connect it and mark out other parts of the, the dress. So that is it for the other side then i also trace the neckline so for the front neckline okay i didn't show you this i came down by 0 0.7 inch okay then i curved it so because i want the neck to be a bit round here so i hope you're seeing this i want to be i want it to be a bit round at the front so i'm going to cut out this part okay so i use 0 0.7 inch so it won't be too deep because i've already taken away five inches for the neck depth okay so at the uh, in all now this is what i'll be having for my neck depth at the center front so i'll just trace out this neck for the back then by the time i finish cutting the back i can create whatever neckline i want for the back i can try to make it deeper and or higher so just trace the back and the arm hole okay so this is just what i want to get so don't have to measure it again okay so this is just it now and then another thing you mark where you have this your points you mark them so here the upper so here the under bust point is not necessary because you're not creating a bustier for the back we usually use the under bust because of bustier so i'm making use of waist there so i've marked the under the upper bust which is where the darts for the back will get to because for the back that it gets to the chest line which is the upper bust then i've marked the bust point the waist the hip so the major points we need here is the upper bust the waist and the hip for the back that so having done this now i'll just remove the front so this is another easy way to just get your back if you don't want to worry about creating that and all that but if you want to use a different type of that for the back you can as well do that you can also use princess that that will cut across the armhole okay so let me just connect this point for now at this waistline now you would okay first of all you will place your bus pan which is 5.5 the same bus pan we use for the front 5.5 you mark it starting from the upper bust okay and you connect it all the way down So I would not cut this dart, but I will stitch it. Okay, so that's why I'm still using the 5.5. I'm still using the 5.5 because I'll still stitch the dart by half inch. Okay, so by the time you have done this now, the next thing is to create the dart. So like I said, if you want to do any other dart, like armhole dart, you can still do that. So for the armhole dart, you just measure your armhole, mark the midpoint. So the initial armhole, this is where it stops. Okay, this is the extra one inch I added. We will not be needing it. I added that one inch because of the dart will be cutting, will be taken from the waist. So we we'll have to replace the dart. That's why I added that one inch. So you see what I will do. So now, if you want um, armhole dart, you measure the armhole, mark the midpoint, and you connect it to the boss point okay so you connect let's say this is the midpoint if you're seeing this you connect to the boss point like so then you just go straight so you can mark half inch here half inch here and you cut 
okay all the way down you can take half inch like so you cut it then you join it back by that half inch but remember to replace the half inch you've taken from here and here which is one inch you replace it here okay but since i'm not making use of the armhole that what i'm using is waist that i'll go ahead and do and if you want to also use neckline that you still uh, mark this line up to the neckline then you take your neckline okay but if you want to do that one you have to draft all over again instead of using the front you just draft all over again like what we did in the front then you create your that so for the waist that you come to the waist so it is one inch that i'm using meaning i'll mark half inch on this side and half inch on this side so let me place it this way half inch okay by the time you have done this you come to the hip if your dress or the top is getting to the hip but if your dress is not getting to the hip whatever you have here you just connect it to the end of the, the blouse but if it's getting to the hip make sure that you come up from the hip by two inches because you're not supposed to have that at the hip so that is to give fitting at this waist area so you come up by two inches from the hip okay then now we have to connect you connect to the chest line which is the same as the upper boss line so that is for the back that so this is to give fitting to the to the back okay so you connect to the chest line or upper boss line like so okay then you also connect to this two inches step up from the hip like so Okay, so this is what I mean. If your blouse is not getting to the hip, wherever your blouse is getting to, just connect this to that point like that. So if your dart is not getting to the hip, or if it's stopping at the waist and you want to add peplum, you just take your dart intake, that is your half inch here, half inch here, then you connect it to the chest line or the upper boss line. Okay, so that is it in case you want to add peplum. But if your top or blouse is getting to the hip, make sure you step up by two inches then you connect so i hope this is clear having done this now we are going to place the horizontal measurement though the horizontal measurement has been taken already remember we had to transfer the front but we are going to replace these darts we have here so this one inch that you just come here and you mark it you take your neckline depending on how deep you want it to be don't forget that we have taken off the shoulder right so i'll still come down by 0.7 inch then i'll connect it so in order not to have double lines i'll first of all use my chalk to just mark okay so this is it then let me just follow it so this is how the depth of the back will be i'll cut off this part so now i can go ahead and cut and i'm not cutting out my dart so i'll just stitch it i'll just stitch the dart now a lot of you has a, a lot of you have asked me this question on how to eliminate zipper bulge so that is very simple what you will do you come to the waistline because it is at that waist area that you usually have that zipper bulge so what you will do on the waist point here that at this waist point go in by zero either half inch or zero point um seven inches okay so i'm going with 0 0.7 you go in on the waistline then you connect it back to the hip line and to the bust line like so it is very simple and i don't cut this out okay so this is simply what you do just connect it and i don't cut it out what i do is when i'm fixing the zipper i just follow the line so you just fix your zipper you can mark this on your fabric you place your zipper on the line like so and you stitch there's no need cutting out this is your zipper allowance but at this hip point you go in because of the curviness at that part so by the time you do this your your blouse will be so relaxed at the back without zipper bulge okay so you fix your zipper on this line like so down to wherever the zipper is getting to so this is just it about the back i'll go ahead and cut and transfer on the fabric okay we have the back and the front now let's cut the sleeve quickly okay so now for my sleeve we are making off shoulder sleeve okay so the first thing to do is to take your sleeve length so the sleeve length here is um 12 inches 
but the sleeve will be having flake but the major sleeve is 12 inches okay but i'll mark at 13 inches guys i'll add one inch seam allowance so i'll add one inch so half inch for the hemming of the sleeve at the top and half inch for joining the sleeve to the flake okay so i'll mark at 13 inches so now i just want to draw a line so this is the length of the sleeve So, having marked the length of the sleeve, I'll place the sleeve caps high. How do you get your sleeve caps high? I've actually explained that in the video I made on how to make off shoulder sleeve. So, it is your round bust. That is the bust circumference divided by 12 plus 1. So, bust circumference divided by 12 plus 1. So, for this line, it is 5 inches. So, you mark it and you draw a line. So this is the sleeve cap's height, sleeve cap, okay? So having done this now, at the edge of the sleeve, that is at this top, you take the sleeve width, the sleeve width, which is the five inches I took off from the bodies, okay? So that's what I'll place here. But I'll add half inch because the sleeve will be joined to the body, so you need a half inch. So I'm marking at 5.5, okay? So at this sleeve cap's height, I'll place the armhole depth measurement. You already know how to get that. So for this line, it is 9 inches. So I'm trying to hurry up because the video is long already. 9 inches. So now you connect from this point to that point, okay? Using a curve. So just curve it. And we have our sleeve armhole. So what is left for us now is to add allowance. So to, the easiest way to do it, just take your bodies. And you try to measure because this is where you're joining it so you want to know the allowance to take okay so let's this is where it is so i'll just add a little more because of some discrepancies you know when we join the top now so this is actually where we have it but i'll add half inch okay so just use your bodies and then add half inch so by the time you hem the top of the sleeve it will not become short so either half inch or 0 0.7 can always trim up excess okay so this is it this is it so at this lower part now you take your round sleeve measurement so in this case it is 13 inches divided by two that is 6.5 i'll mark it i've not added seam allowance yet so let me use one inch for seam allowance so now i'll connect So this is simply how to get your off shoulder sleeve so at this point as well i would like to curve it down a little bit so i'll just come down by half inch so that the neckline and the armhole and the sleeve everything will be a bit rounded okay so just a little curve there is what i want So this is it. I'll go ahead and cut it out. And this is our sleeve, our off shoulder sleeve. So this is simply our off shoulder sleeve. And you can see by the time you sew it to the blouse, you have it going like this. So let me just arrange it. So this is our blouse. Okay. Then the sleeve will come this way. Okay. Can you see how nicely? rounded it is the, the shape can you see the shape from the neckline like so to the sleeve can you see this will give us a very nice off shoulder so thank you so much for watching this is our front our back and our sleeve i would have gone ahead to cut this on the fabric and show you how to sew it but the video will be too long so i'll do that in another video if you are yet to subscribe hit on that subscribe button turn on the bell beside it so that when i upload that video you would not miss it, okay? Video on how to transfer this on our fabric and pad it and stitch, even the zipper. Like I said, the, I'll show how to fix the zipper to eliminate zipper bulge, okay? So don't miss that video. Just subscribe if you haven't done so. And you have to turn on the bell beside it. That's the only way you can get notified when I upload the video. So thank you so much for watching. See you in my next video. Remain blessed.